Why most retirees will never spend down their retirement portfolio. Uh, this is an oldie but goodie from my man, Michael Kitsis, uh, from Kitsis.com, K-I-T-C-E-S. Uh, it's been a few years since I re revisited this, this article because it comes from 2016, but the data set is still incredibly important because it's time immoral, immoral, whatever that is. Uh, my man Ross from PEI has sent this to me, and I said, yeah, I, I need to redo this a video on this again because it's, it's that critical. A lot of you guys, this will be old hat to, but there are new people on this channel all the time, a new people on this channel all the time. So we want to revisit some of the most important stuff that's out there, and, and this is one of the things. Uh, Kitsis is one of those guys, and I've met Kitsis a number of times, and uh, like him, um, he's one of those guys that if he writes it, you should read it. Um, you know, Kitsis, Michael Edisis over at Advisor Perspectives, uh, Joe Tomlinson at Advisor Perspectives, uh, Blanchette, Wade Fow, Finky, Fink, Fink, Finky, I don't know. There's, there's a number of guys that when they write, I read. The boys over at realinvestmentadvice.com, that's a relatively new to me, uh, well, last two years or so, love those guys. Uh, but there's a number of people. Kotlikoff, by and large, I think Kotlikoff, and he, you know, he's a he's a crazy man, and that's and I say that with all love and respect to Larry Kotlikoff. Um, but uh, some of the stuff I, I just it, 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 probably like I do, I kind of irks you, like why, Larry, why? But anyway, be as it may. I don't listen to hardly any financial planning thought podcasts anymore. It just bores me. Um, I Meb Faber, love Meb. I just don't listen to. I just don't. I, I don't. I, I listen to other stuff, generally speaking. But I like to read, and I do read a lot. And so, uh, even though I don't listen or watch other financial planning videos, I watch my man Devin Carroll. That's pretty much it, man. Um, on YouTube, uh, that's pretty much it. <laughs> it's crazy. Anyway, so let's read this. This is an oldie but goodie. Uh, so Kit says, why most retirees will never draw down their re portfolio, retirement portfolio. And I'm just going to show you something here. And we're going to get in the crux of the matter. All right. So you can read all this right here. Retiree. So this is the rich people. And we got quintile. So we got the top quintile, the bottom. And I'm going to talk about this. This is this right here is everything. So retiree financial wealth, you can see from 2000 to 2002, it dropped and then went up. And then from 2008, it kind of leveled. Interesting. Uh, retiree, the second quintile, uh, it went up. It kind of on a trajectory, nice even trajectory. Oh, wait, wait, it went up. Yeah, basically stay the same. Hmm. So that's their financial wealth. How could it have possibly gone up during the 2008 crisis? And how could it have gone up 2001 and two? Oh, nominal consumption. Look at this, nominal consumption. After the retirees, they first retire, they're spending like drunken sailors, but after three years of pretty significant downturns, they start saying, no, we're going to cut back. Markets start going up again. They say, yeah, markets go down, they cut back. That's for the wealthy. The second highest quintile, wealth quintile, right here is right there, number four, uh, same thing. They're, they start spending like drunken sailors because they're living off what my man earlier today was calling the wealth effect, and that's 100% right. And then the wealth effect went the other direction because of 2001 and two, and then they they started declining their a consumption. This is retiree nominal, right? This isn't real. This includes inflated inflation. And they started declining and has gone down ever since. And then interesting. And then you got right here, same thing here, the second lowest quintile. And then interesting. And then you got the uh, lowest quintile right here. It's just, it's amazing, is it not, that people actually use their retirement portfolios based on what situation at hand is. Shocking. Shock. I got to do a, 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 a thumbnail. My shock face. I mess around with some of those stupid fun thumbnails. I just, oh, I just, I can't do it anymore. I saw everyone else doing it. I was like, shocking. And then you'll point. I've done that. For. I, I admit to it. I was like, oh. Anyway, point being is common sense, my friends. When the markets start cratering, you start tightening the belt. It's I just, why do people not know this? It's insane. It's, but instead we say, no, the 4% rule is contingent on your spending going up each and every year with inflation. Has nothing to do with the markets. Has nothing to do with the way you feel, the way the economy is. Of course it does. But, uh, let me show you something else here. Um, Oh, percent distribution of total annual expenditures by major category for all consumers. Interesting. 
Interesting. So housing by far and away is the biggest expense. Huh, interesting. Transportation by far and away the biggest expense. Huh, interesting. Food. Huh, interesting. The three biggest expenses by far and away. Food, housing, and transportation. Huh. Uh, why do I keep doing like that? Apparel's down here. Hmm, healthcare's right here. So when you retire, what do you think goes up in value? Eh, healthcare. What do you think goes down in value? Transportation or expenses. Transportation, housing, and food. And we're going to prove it down here. Check this out. This is Canuts. One second. Point out again, back to Kitsis' thing. Percent change in average annual expenditures by income quintiles, 2015 to 2020. 2019 to 20, people spent less. Interesting. This right here is the highest quintile. They spent 5.54% less. This right here is the fourth quintile. They spent a little bit more, but look at that. Less, less. I huh. wonder why that could be. Why would they have spent less from 2019 to 2020? Because the economy was falling through the, roof, through the, uh, the floor. Check this out. Expenditures on housing. It's just home ownership, right? That's a weird graph for that. That's a weird graph for expenditures on housing. Man, wait, check. Hold on a second. Let's pause it. Food at home, food away from home. Generation X, that's me. Food at home, 66. Food away from home, 34. So we spend two of every three meals we food at home. Hmm. Baby boom. Three quarters of every meal they eat from home. The uh, older folks, basically 75%. See, isn't that interesting? So right here, soon to be retired, recent retires, and old folks. And I love you if you're falling in this category, old folks. I'm just using that for example. So Generation X, two-thirds of every meal is eaten at home. Baby boomers, three-quarters of every meal are eaten at home. And same thing here. So Interesting. Millennials, well, I don't know, uh, post millennials, I don't even know what that is. Um, and millennials, the younger folks, basically two thirds, so uh, a little bit more than a half, is eating at home. What do you think is more expensive, eating away from home or eating at home? Anyone want to take a guess? Hmm. On top of that, remember, we're going to eat out more when we retire. Really? Are you? I hear that all the time. We're going to eat out more. Really? You think you will? No. So what happens here? Oh, um, huh. interesting. Percentage spent on apparel. Oh, this isn't by age. That's too bad. I was hoping it would be. Um, ah, by size of consumer units. Well, well, this is still pretty good, though. A spending um, apparel by size of consumer units. Two, Charlotte and me. Just old Charlotte and me. 2019, we spent 1700 bucks. 2020, we spent 1300 bucks. When it's just retirees. You don't spend as much on clothes when you're empty nesters and retired. No, oh, expenditures on health care. Look at this. So this is expenditure by age of reference uh, people. So it, percent change from 2019-20. I, I don't like that because 2020 was such a nut, a nut job. But anyway, so I just want to point out, again, going back to, I want to go back to here. So your housing is paid off. You still got property taxes, I grant you, but you still had property taxes before the house was paid off. Hard to have a house paid off when you're 35 years old or 40 years old. Hard to have a, a home that's paid off. So housing is going to be over a third of your total expenditures, 100%. Uh, until you have no debt, no mortgage, and then it's just going to be property tax. So I was talking to a guy, these uh, folks today from Connecticut. Property tax is $11,000 a year. It's a high expense. But you know what else is less? The fact that they're going to pay off their mortgage. So their housing is going to go down by half. And that's with a high property tax state. Transportation, same people are driving old Jeeps, one with 200,000 miles, one with 100,000 miles. Are they going to have to replace the cars at some point? But guess what? They're not driving around as much because they're retired, so they don't have to commute back and forth to Buckhead every day. Oh, food. We already talked about food because older people, they don't spend nearly as much on food and restaurants as they do as younger people. Isn't that interesting? Which would go against every single thing you've heard in financial planning. We're going to spend more on food. You know, probably spend a little bit more on travel, a little bit more on health care. Actually, what if they got travel in here, by the way? Let's just double check. All right, let's see. I guess that'd fall under entertainment. Yeah, so 5% of uh, people's budgets are spent on travel. This is going to be charitable contributions, 
buying clothes, health care. You know, you're pacing, pacing it out. You're paying for your personal insurance and pensions. That's going to go away. Look at this. Drops. It won't go away, but drops. Drops. Drops significantly. Goes away. Healthcare will go up. This will probably go up. This, I don't know. Apparel will go down. So because of that, and on top of what Kitz has just said, is that you don't spend as much when the markets are getting crazy and the economy's falling off a cliff. Yeah, you're going to leave a lot more to your heirs than you think. Why most retirees will never draw down their portfolio. It's just common sense, man. You know it. I know it. For some reason, the financial media doesn't know it. I think they do, but they just don't want you to know it. Love your thoughts. We'll see you.